we are at almost five nautical miles so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our first approach speed of 210 knots and click on acquire indicated the speed acquired so auto throttles is going to reduce also because we are very close now to the um, localizer I'm going to tune here I'm going to change the frequency and start the ILS frequency and the course 314 and now because we are very very close to our destination our initial approach we are going to click on track heading to continue our heading and I'm going to change to radio both of them to radio navigation now uh, it started to turn to Kennedy Airport as ah, sorry no 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 it's because I needed to check the ah uh, sorry uh, I pushed the wrong button uh, instead of uh, track heading I should have um, used the heading hold to keep our current heading before to keep our current heading before I switch to the um, to the manual navigation anyway we are now very close to the cathode waypoint and we should be intercepting the glide scope any moment now sorry not the glide scope the localizer any moment now <coughs> And okay, a couple of things before we... Now, there it is, the localizer is alive. And the first thing we're going to do... We are 10 miles, so we need to focus. I'm going to pause. All right, now, first thing is to click on VOR and localizer so that we get established on that localizer. Second, have a look now that we are one diamond above the glide scope, which is pretty, pretty close. So let's go to the final approach uh, checklist, to the landing checklist. Well, as soon as we are established, uh, we are going to um, put down the landing gear. So, and because we are now very close to the glide scope, I'm going to hit on land so that uh, we capture the glide scope and remember to reduce to 190 knots now we are already captured on the glide scope but we are not still we are not yet on the cat 3 approach remember that we have to engage the two ITO pilots the two flight well one I think one flight director was enough uh, and we are already in the art in the indicated speed acquire mode so and as soon as I've uh, used the second autopilot, then we are on CAT3 approach. Landing gear, we need to click on this red piece. This is um, a lock to prevent accidental lowering of the, of the landing gear. And next, the nose has to go, sorry, has to go all the way down. Now, brakes, we have to check that they are in the normal position. I'm going to, because we are now so close to the runway, uh, I'm going to pause each time I make a, a checklist. Now, the visibility on Concord is really poor on, on approach, and that's no wonder, because if we have a look at the pitch angle and the angle of attack, and as we reduce speed, um, <coughs> sorry, the slower we fly, um, the higher the pitch is going to be, and the more difficult the vision uh, is going to be. Now, uh, remember that our approach is 108 and 190 knots, if we fly below 180 and landing gear is not uh, extended, then we'll get a, a gong alarm. Uh, where's a deviation from the from the glide scope? Sorry, from the VOR. And we are on the landing. Maybe we are just capturing. <coughs> Sorry. Now the brakes, they are in the normal position, not emergency. Uh, shift number six. In normal position not emergency no, or park next um, the anti-skid we should read an R letter in the anti-skids so here it goes this R and next step is the auxiliary inlet we um, don't control that we only need to check that they are open control shift number four or if they are not open that they are and uh, here this an icon uh, saying that they are changing to open the auxiliary inlet for the engines 
And now the yellow system, now that the landing gear is down, we need to check that the hydraulic yellow system is uh, activated and working perfectly. And that completes the landing checklist. So remember that we are going to keep now, uh, we need to remember that we have to keep now our speed bags, sorry. Now we are 11, how, seven miles from the airport. So now because we are seven miles, we have to reduce now while well, we are in the minimum of 190. And then once we get to the seven miles, we need to reduce to our current, uh, to the next step of vertical reference speed. Now, as I was saying, because the visibility is so bad, uh, I don't know if this is cheating actually, because if you have a look at the headrest position, I don't know what's the vision that pilots would have, but obviously we, in the simulator with the default view, uh, there's nothing to see. We are completely blind. So we need to use the um, control shift and enter to go up. Remember that you can go down with shift and the backspace and the delete key. So just let's have a um, position where we have a nice vision of our runway. So I'm going to unpause. All the checklists Radio are complete. Now seven miles, so we're going to reduce to 185 nautical miles, uh, sorry, um, knots. Everything seems to go as planned. <clears throat> Now we should be centering, aligning with the runway. 304 and 14. Yep, everything seems good. Oh, remember we had um, some strong, well, not strong, but we had some crosswind. I, I don't know why th this is the problem with just this particular scenery it has nothing to do with with Concord. In fact, our um, virtual memory is uh, almost 900 megabytes free. So it's just this um, FS Dream Team scenario. I don't know why in the last test, as you can see, we've lost a lot of track and detail of the runway. But anyway, we are on our CAT3 landing approach. Well, now four, We are now at four nautical miles. So as you remember, between four miles and, and the runway threshold, we need to reduce to the virtual um, to the reference speed 158, uh, 158 knots <clears throat> so even with the crosswind you can see that the ITO pilot is making a, a wonderful job <coughs> uh, sorry for my coughing uh, I can't help it Okay, now that we are, we can decide if we want to complete the full, the full Cat 3 auto landing or if we want to manually continue from now on. There's plenty of visibility, so actually it's not required to have a, a full Cat 3 auto landing. I'm not very good at landing, so maybe that's why I don't want you to see me. Okay, let's go for it. So autopilot off and auto throttles off. We cancel the alarms. Okay, let's try stable. to keep the glide scope and the speed. Just one thing. Uh, here there is a, a warning. Right now I'm not doing that bad. But right here, um, this is an, an yellow light. If you go over, uh, above or below the glide, the glide scope, uh, this alarm will 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 light up so that you know you are deviation. And then this white, uh, also these white marks. If you deviate from laterally, then you get also another alarm so that you know that you are not doing wrong. Uh, sorry, you are not doing right. Okay, so continue. And remember, 14, we reduced, thr uh, oops, sorry, I didn't touch, maybe accidentally touch at view change button, sorry. Uh, oops, about feet, the glide scope. To go. And 15, we reduced, go back. Feet, decide. 
100 feet. 40, level 50, off. 40, 30, 15, 20, throttles back. And now reverse. And then once the wheels are, the front wheel are uh, on the ground, we can apply, apply the normal brakes. 75 knots. And there we are. Safe landing. 50, 40. Okay, so let's go to the next runway. I couldn't break in time. <clears throat> so now we should prepare for the, um, for the after landing checklist. Uh, you may have seen that, <coughs> which you pause, that I had, remember there was something strange in the view, but remember that I had used um, shift and enter to have a proper view of the runway. So uh, after that, then there's the opposite problem. You cannot see the runway. So I use control space to just uh, set again the default view um, and then be able to complete the, um, the landing with uh, proper vision. So now let's make sure we are not too fast here for the turn. 20 knots. Okay, so now that we are out of the runway, let's start with the after landing checklist. I'm going to apply parking brakes. Otherwise, uh, and that's one of the things I'm just going to talk about, is that because we are so light on weight, on fuel weight, uh, just with the, I'm going to demonstrate it, just with idle power, I'm not applying any power at all, you see that uh, we uh, advanced. Even with the idle power, um, we go forwards. So one of the things, on, on our, one of the first things we're going to do in our checklist is to shut down the two inner engines. Oh, sorry, this is the landing checklist and after landing checklist. So tire lights, we're going to make sure that the tires are in, in good condition, that there was no problem after the landing, after the touchdown. Brakes fan as required. Oops, sorry. Oops. Now, uh, if you remember, we combined the um, reverse throttles with the brakes and brakes get really, really hot on Concord. The carbon fiber brakes are very powerful, but at the same time, they get very hot. Shift number two, we go to the brake panels. And now, as we can see, we are slightly above 200 degrees, which is when we, we get the, the alarm that they are too hot. So yes, of course, we need to activate the brakes fan, then cancel the master warning. Remember, we're going to shut down two engines and all the alarms are going to go off. So we need to inhibit those alarms. Now, the nose, um, when it's fully down, is very close to the runway and is dangerous with other vehicles and other, um, that we may encounter during our taxi. So for that reason, we need to uh, set the, um, the nose and visor <coughs> sorry, to 5 degrees. Uh, now, the flight control inverters, we need to set them in the off position and for some strange reason they are in the off position already um, at some time I can't remember where I saved a flight and reloaded and for some reason uh, they must have changed so they should be they were in this position during flight if you remember we set them just in our uh, cockpit, pre pre cockpit preparation and we now to set them to the off so we uh, switch off the alarm and um, okay so now we've got need to observe that uh, we've got the um, the our flight controls they get from green to manual if you remember here that is our flight controls that we described during our before taxi uh, checklist if you remember, we closed these two special um, electrical settings for the LeCat 3 approach. So control shift and number seven. We are going to, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. Left click to close it again. Um, the ramp. 
Uh, let me check. I'm not missing. Okay, run and spill master switches. Uh, we don't have to do anything. Just check that they are in the manual position. Uh, which was this one? Master switches manual. Here, the ramp and spill. They should be at manually. But anyway, you don't have to worry about this because this is controlled by the virtual flight engineer, so we couldn't change it anyway. The inboard engines, we're going to shut them off. As I was speaking before, we have too much power and we switch off the two in inner. So number engines number two and number three, we're going to shut them off and then the um, virtual flight engineer is going to deactivate the auto ignition. So these two are off. Of course, we are going to have the two engine alarm. And we continue with the press static heaters, the ADS and standby and the drains. All these heaters should be off. Also, we were using the anti-icing, but we are not. So shift number three. And uh, once again, for some reason, um, I didn't complete properly the, the, the loading of some step before. Well, this has to be off, off, and off, all off. And also now the um, windshield emergency DI switches, they should also be off, shift number four. They are off, by the way. Once again, I, I must have loaded some strange um, saving. Transponder to XPDR, shift number seven. Uh, so two. Next, um, pressurization, just check that the cabin pressure is at zero, ground level. Well, not actually ground level, um, yes, the level, the, the altitude of the airport now, because this is a, a sea level airport, but the cabin altitude has been the same as the exterior. Now, the batteries, the other switch we used for the CAT3 landing, we need to put them in the normal working position, Shift 8, 8, sorry, Shift Control 8, left click once, try right cl click once, and right click once, and that's the after, no, and just check the brake temperature. They are below 200 knots, but we are, uh, sorry, 200 um, degrees, but we are just let them on until we get to the runway terminal. So release parking brakes. <coughs> and we are going to continue. Let's just have a little bit of vision um, to see which ramp we are going to use. We are going to just turn right here and use this one. Now, of course, taxi, it's much more slow because we are only running on two engines. So there we go to the right. just chosen the the closest gateway gate more or less so parking brakes applied and of course the parking checklist brakes park yes of course they are applied and with a full power the parking brakes next all the lights and transparencies uh, should be off. Main landing lights, taxi turn lights, the windshield selectors, the visor, visor. So everything should be off. Shift number four. So all the lights off and all the dimmies and DIs, they are all off. Uh, no some visor, they should, oops, they should be up, all the way up. Uh, the emergency generator it was a special setting that we prepared during our before taxi preparation. It was a system so that we have electrical power in case of emergency. Now left click to set it to auto. 
uh, ground power we have to check we've got ground power but but uh, ground power doesn't work with two engines running so control shift 7 uh, this light lights up when we've got ground power available but if we select from the ground services if we request ground power this does not light up the reason is that we only need one engine running in order to be able to request ground power so we are going to shut down number one which is the closest to the um, to the finger here so that um, this side left side of the aircraft is uh, clear of the engine number one is off and now control shift seven if we request ground power it's still running uh, now if we request ground power there it is so if now if now we left click we are using now uh, ground power we didn't check the source sorry as we did before remember that here we can check when ground power is connected if we've got the the right values so now we can continue with the checklist now HV, HP valves we can now shut down even also engine number four we can also um, sw switch off the engine generators so switch Pull off up. and then the engine generator we can also switch it off because uh, we've got the ground power <coughs> And uh, we continue, throttle masters, they should be off now, shift number three. And now, anti-collision snap light, fasten seats, and NGAsian is off already. So, anti-collision goes off, seat belts goes off. Uh, primary flight controls off. The ground condition unavailable, so we need to make sure that we request ground air and shift to sorry shift to and make sure the air condition stays on so that we can have keep the passengers comfort while unloading disembarking. Now the batteries go off, control shift eight, right click, right click. Uh, now the transponder to standby, control shift seven. Sorry, no, control shift 7, no, shift 7. And uh, then left click once to get to standby. Brake fans as required. Sorry, shift number 2. Brake fans, uh, brakes are almost cold now, so right click and set them to off. Uh, now the flight deck door, we can unlock shift number 3. Two left clicks. Um, that's the end of the parking checklist. Now, to a complete uh, code and dark, we continue with the stopover, switching off the air data computers, control shift number seven, right click and right click. When we release the electrical power, all the electrical trims and stabilizers, they all get off. Also, our elevons go off, go down. As you can see here, no electrical power, no hydraulic power, so they go off and the flight control inverters they should get fully off so we need to first open the protection here left click now that the protection is off we can right click and to power it off completely left click right click now the ground power we don't need ground power anymore so we are going to switch down switch it off completely control shift 7 now we right click and 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 set it to trip we disconnect completely all the electrical current so we are completely cold and dark now because we have no current the emergency exit lights are on shift number three and we can switch them off uh, here now uh, we've completed our flight there's just one more thing i would like to comment and uh, when we went when we start a new flight in a new airport we can use the load panel settings uh, sorry. Now, as you can see, during the tutorial, I've been saving a lot of different points. Um, uh, Flight Sim Labs uh, includes two panels, uh, two panel states, cold and dark, and Concord Preliminary. But if you load this, 
you're going to have the same, you know, you perfectly know you're going to have the same panel state every single time. So you are 100%, nothing has changed from one flight to the other. Now, because your setting down procedures can be different, for example, in the tutorial, uh, it doesn't mention the emergency lights, so you always start with the emergency light at arm, but in the last step, I let it in, in the off position. So what I like to do is I go to the FS Labs menu and then save this panel state so that I make sure I click on new and then I click on, well, I usually have the last flight. So I always save it as the last flight and I want I make sure that on my next uh, flight uh, I always load the, the panel state. So I always load the panel state from my very last flight. And that's it. I really hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. Um, as you can see, I'm not a Concord expert. Uh, if you are, you very likely would like to correct me a lot of things. Um, but the thing is, as you've seen, I've been able to complete a successful flight. Um, there are many things to do, more or less. I've got a broad idea of how everything works. And this is very satisfactory for me, so I'm not making the tutorial because I believe I know more than anyone else, but simply because I enjoy this way of flying and I'm only sharing, sharing my experience and I hope you find it good. Please remember that my uh, YouTube channel at simulaciondevuelo.com is mainly aimed at Spanish Spanish speakers and also my website. So of course you can subscribe, uh, but I don't really think you're going to find many more videos in, in English. Uh, I very randomly or seldomly do. Um, so okay, you can su subscribe if you want, but it's not something that I think is going to be very helpful for you. Um, I will be in the forum, in the Flight Sim Labs forums from time to time. So maybe we can see each other over there. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your Concord. Goodbye.